Today's the day we review photo gear. Hey there, welcome to Tom's Tech Show. Today we're kind of going over what I use in my photography. Um, most kind of really technical, geeky people seem to like photography. Um, it really helps to offset the you know highly technical program code side, offset that with some creative side. So we you know trying to be trying to be a well-rounded person, right? I'm trying you know. It's 50 years along, and I'm, maybe I should start doing that. I don't know. Anyway. Okay, so um, I have a the T4i. This is a couple-year-old camera. Um, it has a crop sensor. Of course, I, I waited buying this one until there were this uh, 18 to 135 lens came out so that I could, you know, the... Normal one only has a 18 to 55, but I wanted the longer, a little bit longer zoom, and that has definitely helped. I'm very glad that I did that and waited and and was able to get this model. I mean, of course, it's always more money, but you know, so but it does have the the nice flip out screen that you can flip around and twist around, and it's all touch screen, and you can do all the adjustments on screen, which makes it really nice. Um, it has. Uh, you get the little pop-up flash, and you can put another flash up on the top, um, so that the camera that I use most of the time. Some things I take with my phone. Um, I do have a newer phone. Um, that's this LG G7 Think Phone. It has two different lenses, two different cameras in the back, um, so that helps with some zooming and, and wide angle and stuff. So, so that I kind of like. So that's that's the camera that I use. Um, most often, um, I do have a flash. This is a a Yongmo YN565. Um, it is kind of similar to the Canon one, but the Canon flash was uh, going to be like four or five hundred dollars, and this one was a hundred dollars. Um, you can now get like Amazon Basics ones for like fifty bucks or something. <laughs> really cheap now for a flash. I mean, flash photography is very it's a lot harder than it looks and a lot harder than it seems. Um, this flash does have, it's automatic, so it reads through the lens. The camera can trigger it. You can set it in slave mode, put it off somewhere, and be able to trigger remotely or behind as a fill, kind of a flash. And it does have this little diffuser here that allows it to, to diffuse the light from the flash a little bit from a wide angle thing. And so it has the uh, bounce card so that if you stick it and shoot it straight up the light comes out and sends some light forward and some light up to bounce off of ceilings to add it to fill so that really helps when you're using a flash um, but yeah this one works works pretty well runs on uh, a bunch of uh, AA batteries I of course get you know rechargeable AA batteries um, to go places um, but that's the flash that I use Okay, some other accessories. This is my strap. This uh, this is uh, it's made by Case Logic, and it's just a simple over-the-shoulder strap. And then many straps, right? They'll hook up on here on the top of the camera, and then you're you know it's sitting, you know, like this over your, you know, on your chest or hanging down, and it just isn't very doesn't really flow very well. So um, what this one does is this one attaches to the bottom of the camera to the tripod mount. So you can't like have the tripod mount and this attached at the same time. But um, it does allow it to, when, when the camera's in the strap, it's sitting at your side, typically with the grip right out there where you're going to need to grab it. So it just sits there, you just grab it, take your picture, and if you drop the camera, it just goes right back to your side. So it makes it really safe. You know, handling the camera. I mean, this thing just basically just loops over one shoulder, and then you've got the connector there, and it's very easy to, you know, move the camera up, move the camera down, and take a picture, and, and then you just drop it, and the little thing goes back. I really, I've tried many different straps, and this one definitely is the one that I like the most and use the most often when I don't have my tripod mount on. Okay, so. 
Oh, on the flash, you can do uh, a bunch of funky things with it. I have this whole set of color filters. Um, I've used them from time to time if I want to do something fancy, like I have yellow filters and red and greens and blues, so I can actually change the color of the lighting coming out of the flash. That's a very way out there kind of thing that I don't do very often. Um, so my regular tripod has the uh, my camera, my webcam on it that I'm using to film this. So uh, that's just a, uh, what is it? It's a Manfrotto, one of the cheaper Manfrotto's. I think it was 50 bucks. Uh, the legs aren't really heavy. So that kind of gets, uh, you know, it'd be nicer to have a bigger, heavier one. Uh, but I do, if I'm going to take anything that's long exposure or anything like that, I set it the legs way down to the bottom uh, so that it doesn't shake or anything. I do have this one, this tripod. Since they will not allow you to take tripods into Disneyland, I need I use this one. This one has little grips. You can actually make it so that it like grips and grabs onto things when you're at different places. So, um, and it has a little level in the back part here so that when you're setting the camera, you can make sure that the camera is level. Um, it also has, I also have an attachment for this thing. If I can get that part out, there we go. An attachment, let's see, there we go. Attachments, there's this attachment here, this little tiny attachment here. When I put it in there, it turns this into a flash holder so then I can take and put the flash somewhere off to the side grip it around a pole so the flash is shooting from the side and it's very easy to take with me and stuff when I'm using the flash okay. the there's also little uh, spike things that you can put on the end of the so like if you're in sand or you're in some rocks or something you want to make sure this thing doesn't move you can put the little spikes on it and dig it into the dirt and everything like that so that's this little uh, Joby Gorilla Grip. It's the SLR Zoom version of that. Um, then I also bought these little tiny snap boxes. They just the lids open and they snap and close. I have you know a whole slew of them about the same color so that I know all my green boxes like this are camera gear. Um, I got them at the local dollar store. They were a dollar a piece, so made it really easy just to keep all that stuff in there. We'll put this back into the tripod over there. Put that on the ground. Okay. So lenses. I do have, I got this lens. This is a, uh, the ratings are average for this lens. This is uh, a 70 to 300 uh, EF lens. Now the Canon has EF lenses and EFS lenses. The S lenses are for, made more for this camera which is, uh, you know, the crop sensor or smaller sensor. So, but it still works with regular EF lenses. Just you have to do the calculation. So a 70 to 300 is really more like, uh, you multiply that by one and a half. So that's really more like uh, 130 or so to 450. So that kind of matched with my 18 to 1, 135, so then this one's 30, you know, 130 to 450, so that just, you know, extended that, and I did get this refurbished, you can get these things refurbished from Canon directly, uh, this is normally a $650 lens, and I got it for uh, 200 bucks, so they had a sale, they had, and it was refurbished, so I've not had any problems with it at all, um, I did buy a bigger lens hood so that you know when you're when you're out there and you're taking pictures that really looks like it's large like you know what you're doing but you know I don't really know what I'm doing so it just makes it look like I do okay so there's that I also have your basic um, 50 millimeter this is the uh, uh, 50 millimeter oh, it's dirty 50 millimeter uh, f1.8 lens. So if I ever want um, anything to actually have kind of that really really nice bokeh, that that fuzziness, you know, the blurriness behind you know any image uh, for like portraiture, you know, that the phones kind of do automatically now. 
this is the lens that I use. Um, this I think was a hundred bucks. It's not real expensive there. The next one's down the f1.4 is the cost just escalates, but you're not getting much from that, you know, to the next. So that is that lens. Um, I also have some filters. Most of these filters only fit uh, my 8135, my 18 to 135. This is a polarizing filter. It's a circular polarizer. So we can take the sky and make it bluer, uh, different things like that. Um, I did a video the other day where I went and used these filters. These are my neutral density filters. So I can take, it's basically sunglasses for the camera. You can see it's very dark um, and it's just even, you know, neutral levels of neutral gray, you know, that make it so that you can darken it. And then you can do things like long exposures. I'll show you some of those photos here in a minute uh, once I get done going through all this stuff. So there's that. Uh, what else do we have? I also have a pet peeve of mine. I go to the beach and when it gets to be like October-ish, maybe early November, I see all these people out there. All these people are out there. They've got somebody with some fancy camera and they're taking pictures of their family. The family's there, and behind them is a super bright sunset. So they're taking these pictures, and they have no flash that they're using. So now they've got to either blow out the background so the background is completely almost white in order to get them with proper – the family that they're taking the picture of in proper exposure, or they've got to make the ca the – image so dark that they have to go into Lightroom or something and open up all the shadows to get the people to show up in the photograph. And that, of course, produces noise and grain and everything else, which is just horrible. So I'm like, go to Amazon, spend the $12, right? Get something like this. This is just simply a little thing that creates reflection. So, I mean, you can see here that I'm, you know, reflecting the light off of my lights here into the camera and it's adjusting all my exposures and stuff. There's a black, if you look inside, if you, if, uh, depending on who you're taking pictures of, there's also a white and over here there's a gold. So the gold will add, you know, a nice little bronzish, you know, tint to your photograph. So, but I see this happening all the time. It just drives me nuts that people are like taking these kind of pictures. It's like, spend the $12. If you're going to be a professional, spend the $12. You can get them bigger, smaller, whatever. I, t I use this size, which is like a 24 inch one, because it's very easy to just throw in my bag and to take with me. So that is there. Um, I also have a, let me grab it. This is another little. It's kind of a snoot thing. I know, snoots, yes. So this, it goes on the end of the flash. So it's kind of, it's a diffuser for the flash. So I take and attach this to the end of my flash. And instead of there being just this small surface area there, I have a much bigger surface area. Because, I mean, the larger the surface area that the light is coming from, the better will make the picture a lot better. So and not be such harsh lighting. So I have this one that I also carry with me. These are both photodiox uh, little things that are with me. Uh, so now where are we going? What's next? Um, this is extremely important. This is my USB adapter for iPad. So I have my uh, iPad got an iPad Pro here and um, yes I know it is shocking but the screen on the background of my iPad Pro is Buzz Lightyear I know it's crazy but so this plugs into the iPad which I then can plug into the camera which I can then download pictures onto the iPad and review them and there's we have Lightroom on the iPad so we can do some basic adjustments. Is there something that I want to get out really quick? Some picture that I want to just send off. Boom, I need to take this and get it sent out really quick. Then I can do that with this little camera adapter. It's very, very handy. Um, I've also 
gone on vacation and instead of bringing a PC to do editing, a uh, laptop, then I just bring this little cable and my iPad and boom, I'm off editing. So um, other than like miscellaneous, you know, lens cleaning brushes and extra batteries and, and things like that, that's pretty much everything that I kind of drag with me wherever I go. So um, we can look at a couple of these photos. I do have a photo site, uh, thomasnelsonphotography.com, um, that I kind of post uh, these photos to and then maybe link them to other social media sites. So this video is getting kind of long, but I am going to uh, Santa Cruz Island, uh, which is uh, out here off the coast of Ventura. Uh, we're going to head a trip over there and do some uh, photography on the island, which should be pretty fun. Um, we'll be doing that. I'm not going to take all of this gear because that's all oh, the another thing that I have and that you kind of need. Off of this stuff. There are a few more things. I found something else. Okay. So, one thing that I. Of course, you need memory cards, right? But this is a very inexpensive. Uh, little remote so you set the camera up uh, put it on remote two second delay so if it's on the tripod and I'm taking a photograph of something and the exposure is any length longer length of time in order to keep the camera shake down you know if you're pushing on the button with your hand you're causing the camera to shake so if I step away from the camera and can use a the remote then I'm not there making the camera shake and the remote is, was just there to make it trigger off. I also have this, this little tiny cube. Um, I don't know if you can see this. This has like little levelly things inside of it. And the bottom of it is a hot shoe adapter. So I just take this and stick it in the top of my camera. Then wherever I am taking pictures and I want to make sure that the camera is level, I can make it level on any different, so I can make it perfectly level. I can even do, you know, this way and make it level so that I can make sure, because the, the leveler your camera is when you are taking the photograph, then you don't have to fix the level and horizon inside of Lightroom. Because anytime you take that photograph and turn it inside Lightroom, you're gonna be losing detail by doing that. So getting it level from the beginning on the, when you take the photograph, the better you'll be in, in editing. And again, all my little things in a little green box, easy to find, easy to see, especially down at the bottom of a bag. Okay, that's photography, gears, components, and junk for today. Um, if you like photography, then I'll be making more of these. There'll definitely be um, an extended episode after Thursday, heading out to Santa Cruz Island. Um, to do some photography out there. Um, that should be fun. i got to get batteries charged and pack my bag and everything else. So that... It's always stressful, right? You know, am I going to forget anything? Because I can't, like, jump on the boat and come back. It's an hour and a half out there, you know, to get there and to get back. So um, I also do videos about movies and TV, like uh, Marvel. So I have my Marvel thing up there. I got my Marvel 10-year poster. Um, of course, there's, you know, Marvel stuff back here. My, my little Incredible Hulk. My Thor with the lid that goes on top of the, you know, Avengers Cup thing from the movie. I do those kinds of things. Oh, gosh, what else do I do? I do really techy, geeky things that um, I do for work. Mostly right now it's about AWS and PowerShell and how to manipulate AWS and PowerShell. I do some other VMware things, do some just Windows kind of things, maybe Linux kind of things, uh, all that kind of stuff. So if you like any of those things, subscribe to my channel and each of them are arranged, each of those subjects are arranged in a playlist. So you can just go through the playlist and see what kind of things you like and learn stuff and get entertained by stuff. So, all right. Well, this one went a little long just going through my gear. I didn't realize I had so much junk that I'd collected over the years, but hey. 
It's it's photography and it's fun and it's a hobby and where do we spend most of our money, guys? Uh, yeah, our hobbies. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for watching and take care.